Hey everyone, it's Abby. Now that the skirt is finished, I can move on to the 1890s ball gown bodice. I've been putting off this part because I knew this was going to be a massive challenge. I'm not one to usually shy away from a challenge, but this one really got me. Either way, I'm finally here. I had to do it eventually. I definitely wanted the puff sleeve a la Anne of Green Gables, though some are sleeveless. I realized I wanted to have both as an option, so I'm going to make the sleeves detachable. I also have to be really creative in how I fit the bodice onto the rest of the shot green silk I have left over from creating the skirt. So let's get started. I started with the Truly Victorian TV 490 1892 ball gown bodice pattern to create the base for my bodice. I'm using cotton canvas from Joann's as my base layer. This is the same fabric I use for the base of my corsets. I'm changing the opening to the front as I will be hiding it with my draping. I need to straighten out the back piece so I can place it on the fold. I pin the pieces to my doubled fabric. I cut out my bodice structure layer pieces. I pin and machine sew the sides and back pieces together. I pinned the darts and shoulders on my dress form with my corset on it. Off camera I had to adjust the darts until it fit right and machine sew them up. I placed pins and marked where I wanted the neckline and bottom adjustments to be. I cut those with half an inch seam allowance. I press all the seams and darts flat. I clip corners and curves and press a half inch into all the edges of the structure layer. I test the fit on my dress form again. It looks good, so I move on to the next step. I hand whip stitch all the seams and raw edges flat, leaving the bottom free for now. I want to bone this bodice like I've seen in extant bodices. It helps the structure layer to lay flat on top of the corset.
I had to adjust a few spiral steel bones I had laying around for the curved back seams. I recapped them and thought about using some twill tape for the boning channels. I trimmed out quarter inch plastic bones and rounded the edges for the rest of the bodice. I cut pieces for the darts as well. I'm using the seam allowances as my boning channels, and I insert the bones. I sew boning channels into the darts. I add a little twill tape at the end to support the rest of the boning. I also add a straight stitch to the other boning channels so they don't move in the casing. I finish off the bottom edge with a whip stitch. I pin the front to my dress form and mark where they line up at the center front. I pin bones into the center front edges. I use a running back stitch to create the front boning channels. I sew hooks and eyes to the front opening as closures. I place the finished structure layer on my dress form. Now it's time to drape the fashion layer. I'm using some poly cotton I had lying around and pin and drape the front larger piece. This takes a while as I try and figure out how I want it to lay. I draped some of it off camera as it was frustrating me a lot.
I didn't like that even after adjusting, so I removed some pleats as less pleats seemed like it would look better. I liked this one, so I mark where I need to cut out the pattern. I trim leaving a bit extra. I draped the back pieces off camera and marked the two pieces with pencil. I draped the final underpiece on the front off camera and marked the edges. As you can see, I switched the pleats to be facing up instead of down. I've had to make a lot of adjustments while draping this, so it was hard to film it. I pinned the puff sleeve pattern on doubled cotton lining fabric. This will be the sleeve interlining. I had wanted to make it larger originally, as you can see. I later cut it down to the exact size of the pattern. I also pinned the inner sleeves on the doubled lining fabric. I cut the pieces out. It's time to finally cut into my silk fashion fabric. I'm going to be conserving as much as I can. I lay my draped mock-up pieces on the fabric and pin in place. I cut out the draped silk bodice pieces.
I pin the puffed sleeve to the fold. I cut one sleeve out and pin to another piece of doubled silk. I cut out the second sleeve. Whatever's left can now be used for my day bodice. I pin and redrape the silk fashion layer onto my dress form on top of the structure layer. I created a small template out of cotton that will be the base for my draped olive poly chiffon. I realized it would show through, so I pin around the edges to create a template from the chiffon itself. I pin the template in place and start pinning and draping the chiffon. I didn't like how it was working, so I'm plating it flat on my table. I checked to make sure it's the right amount of pleating, and I start hand sewing running stitches around the whole thing. I trim around the edges of the template. I flip to the other side and start anchoring the pleats with a whip stitch. This will hide the stitches, but keep the pleats in place.
I draped some chiffon pleats on the back. You can see I moved them around a bit and pinned the back chiffon pleats directly to the structure layer. I hand sew those pleats in place. I resituated my silk pleats and clip corners where I want the pleated chiffon to show through, and pin with the raw edges folded under. I do the same thing with the other, larger side. I start with hand sewing the smaller front pleated piece to the structure layer. I'm just basting it down within the seam allowance where I can. Getting the pleats to stay in place is really difficult. I keep going like this, hiding the basting stitches under where the top piece will lay. I pin the larger pleated back piece in place, folding under raw edges and base that in place off camera. I hand sew the chiffon layers where they will hide under the silk layers. I wrap the raw edges under to the back and whip stitch those in place. I use a piece of silk to create a facing piece for the front fashion layer. I pin and hand stitch using a small running back stitch. I understitch the facing piece. Once I have the facing pieces in, I pin the pieces in place with the raw edges folded under. I line up the seams on the edges and shoulders. I hand whip stitch those with tiny stitches from the outside with matching olive thread. I hand stitch the shoulder seam as well. I roll under the raw edges at the front of the draped wraparound piece and hand stitch in place. I wrap under the raw edges around the whole bottom, clipping curves and corners, and hand stitch in place. I also do this along the shoulders. I got everything attached to the structure layer at this point. Now I wanted to figure out the sleeves. I decided to add chiffon piping using a friend's suggestion to finish off the edges of the armholes. I cut bias strips and hand make some piping. I pin and hand stitch that to my armholes. I roll that to the inside, hiding the raw edges, and whip stitch that in place. For some reason, I entirely forgot to film how I attached the hooks and eyes on the front closures. I'll try and film a small video of how the bodice goes together sometime in the future. I had a crazy time getting all this to work, so I'm not surprised I missed filming a bit of the process. Oops. I hand based the silk puffed sleeve to the cotton interlining. Thank you. 
I add machine gathering stitches to the tops of the inner sleeve lining. More machine gathering stitches on the puffed sleeve piece. I pin and machine sew the inner sleeve lining seams. I pin and machine sew the outer puff sleeve seams. I trim and hand fell the puffed sleeve seam. I hand fell the inner sleeve seams as well. I gather and pin the outer puff sleeve bottom seam to the inner lining sleeve. I machine sew those together. I flip that piece out and understitch along the inner sleeve lining. I gather the inner lining sleeve head to the right size. I pin and machine sew a small bias strip to keep the gathers in place. I trim the excess, flip the raw edges under, and pin in place. I'm finishing off the edges of the sleeve heads with cotton bias tape so that the sleeves can be removable if wanted. I gather and pin the outer sleeve to the inner cotton sleeve, pinning a bias strip, and machine sew that a quarter inch from the edge, leaving a couple inches at the very top of the sleeve head where I will have an opening. I trim and flip the binding to the inside, hiding the raw edges and whip stitch in place. You can see I've added snaps here as well. These are for the sleeve supports I'm about to make. I've seen a few different types of sleeve supports around, 
Because I have an inner sleeve, I wanted to make something a little different to poof my sleeves out. My sleeve supports will be removable if I need to. I start with the plastic Rigoline sew-in boning and twill tape in a few different widths. I measure and cut the pieces that I need, one piece to support the bottom of the structure against the arm, another to keep the half loops from moving around too much and attaching to the top of the sleeve. I also cut two lengths of the Rigoline to act as the hoop support. I cut some shorter pieces that will wrap around under the arm and snap in place if I ever use this in a different way. I hand sew the raw edges of the wider twill tape. I pin the first tube on both sides and hand sew in place. I do the same for the second hoop. You can see this one is slightly bigger than the other. I hand sew the twill tape straps to the wider piece. I hand sew the twill tape to the middle of the larger hoop. I measure three and a half inches, pin and hand sew the twill tape to the middle of the smaller hoop. Off camera, I hand sewed snaps to the straps and the support structure. You can see how this would fit on my arm. I mark where I want the tape to sit at the top of the sleeve, insert the hoops, snap into the snaps on the inside, and pin the twill tape to the top of the sleeve. I wanted to create a fun, fluffy upper sleeve out of the chiffon. I cut a half moon shape. I trim that down to the right size and test the fit.
I hand roll the hem of the chiffon. I gather and finish off the top edge with cell fabric bias tape. I baste that to the top of the puffed sleeve. I created marks that I can line up if I ever remove the sleeves. I've marked which is the left and right sleeve as well. I pin the puff sleeve to the finished armhole. I hand sew the puffed sleeve to the main bodice. I can seam rip this off if I ever want to have them removed. For final decoration, I wanted to add a bunch of roses. These are the same roses that I used for the skirt. I wanted them to match. And there we have it, a completed green shot silk 1890s ball gown bodice. Now I just have to find a ball to attend. Thank you for joining me today as I made my 1890s ball gown bodice. Now that I know how much fabric is left, I want to make a day bodice using the scraps. I can also use some of the poly chiffon and I even have a gold silk that will contrast with the rest really well. I'm not sure when I'll make this, but I definitely have it on my list. If you liked this video and want to see more sewing and costume videos, remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing! Oh, <sighs>